So we looked at we looked at the internet and when we talked about the internet we said that the every machine has to have a unique IP address. And an IP address is a 32-bit identifier which is expressed as we saw in a dot format. But if you think about it, that only gives us 2 to the power of 32 possible possible uh, machines if every machine has to have a unique IP address. Um, that's not a whole lot um, because that's what uh, 4, so 2 square times 2 to the power of 30, which is around 4 billion approximately, 4 billion machines. That's even if if you think of every person on the earth having a machine, uh, having an IP address, we're, we're not going to be able to sustain this growth. And I might need more than one for me. Yes. <laughs> so what we need is a way to cope with this. Fortunately, the IETF, which is the standards body that governs the internet, um, has, has a stopgap, created a stopgap measure, I'll say stopgap, because their eventual solution was to do what is called IPv6. We are currently at IPv4. In IPv6, we'll make this 128-bit addresses. And 128-bit addresses are, are going to be plentiful, and everybody can have their own internet, so to speak. Right? So, so that's going to be an eventual goal. But in the meanwhile, the IET, IETF created what are called the ability to create private networks. Um, these are also called intranets. So the idea is you have a network of many machines, let's say your home network or your small business network, and you are connected to the internet. And rather than have every machine on your, on your network have a unique IP address, you have one machine one designated machine that has a unique IP address. Everything else inside your network has a private IP address. So the private ad IP addresses have been de created by the I IETF as numbers between 10.0.0 to 10.255 255.255.255. These are one range. There's another range which which is in the 172.16.0.0 all the way up to 172.31.255.255. And a lot of people use the 192s. These have been around for the longest. They've been around as, as long as others, but these have kind of been used more extensively. So these are 192, 168, from 255.255. So you can build your own network. The idea is that you have a private IP address, but for the outside world, this IP address becomes your face. And it's achieved by a technique called network address translation, or NAT for short. In a, in a nutshell, what that means is every time you communicate, you use your IP, this, this unique host, as a proxy for you. So it, it sends your packets on behalf of you, and when responses come back, it, de it deciphers who it's for and forwards it to the right place. So it's a, it's a proxy of a sort. So this will facilitate the growth of the Internet of Things before we get to the using IPv6. And what you're going to notice is when you build the lab for this chapter, you're going to see an address when you communicate with your <coughs> access point from the CC3100, you're going to see uh, one of these private IP addresses for your computer. But when you do the translation to see the weather server or our embedded system server, you're going to see the public IP address of that server. 
So you're going to see both private IP addresses and public IP addresses uh, when doing the lab. All right, so let's build something. Yes, let's.